really can't believe that I'm wearing a turtleneck in June. Iniciamos. I like coffee with my coffee. I'm a no bullshit kind of girl. No room for creamer or that vanilla stuff either. I need. Hi, welcome back to Isabel's Digest. I am Isabel. And today's book digestion is about If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio, published in 2017. So what is this novel about? If We Were Villains is a novel surrounding the murder of a student from a liberal arts college that focuses a lot in Shakespeare. This is a very prestigious college and this student was part of an elite group of Shakespearean actors and he, along with his classmates, are very tight together. I think there are, if I'm remembering correctly, there are six of them. The six of them are more like siblings. They have been the four years with each other, and each year there's a student that gets kicked out of the program. So it's a very competitive, high-stressing place to be at. But if they're that close to each other, why is one dead, right? Who murdered this person? Who is the responsible? And why did this murder happen? Um, we'll see that. Our main character is Oliver. We meet him years after the murder and he was in prison for it. He was in prison for the murder of his classmate. And since almost the beginning, we know that he didn't do it though. We know that he's innocent and he's holding information from the police willingly. So who did it and who is he trying to protect from the rest of the group. We have Oliver reminiscing about this time and what happened when he's being freed to go and we figure it out along the way. With Shakespeare spilling out of their mouths, the characters of If We Were Villains will show us how deep the bard can get to us with his words. Now I feel like I need to elaborate why am I doing this book digestion in case that you follow my Goodreads and because next video is going to be the wrap up and you're going to be confused because I usually do book digestions on books that were like four, five, or books that I really need to rant about. And If We Were Villains is a book that I give three stars out of five. It's an average rating. It's a very good rating for me because I don't give fives out of nowhere and four is a really good rating. So three is like an average read. But the reason why I wanted to do this video is because the things that were right and if we were villains were very good. And the things that were lacking in an aspect might not have been lacking for you as another type of reader or whatever. So I don't feel that it's fair to let it go without a video. And that's why I'm here and because I also have some things that I want to talk about. Also, let's keep in mind that this is a debut novel. And in this channel, we'll give some um, grace to debut novels because as a first book that you're putting out there, If We Were Villains is really good. ML Rio, you are very good. And I hope you guys like this. Um, some of the aspects I enjoy the most about this book were rooting to its structure. It really works with the instruction that it has. If you are familiar with Shakespeare and you read this, then you are gonna spot on the five act structure or division that is also called uh, dramatic structure, I think. And if you are not familiar with it though, it's very easy to follow and you might also get the reference or you might know how is it working out because it's very influenced from the three-part plot structure from Aristotle that I already talked about, I think, in my Fahrenheit video, if you want to check that out. But if not, I'm going to explain it to you right here. The five-act play consists on exposition, rising action, climax, falling action, and resolution or catastrophe. Catastrophe is the word that they use usually when there is a tragedy. So when it ends all in murder, like think Titus Andronicus or something like that. When it's not a resolution, but it's an ending and it feels definitive like death itself. This structure is very well done by the novel. I have nothing to mention about it. It was spot on. And sometimes, even if you're not thinking about this structure, the characters points it out, especially Oliver, because he's the one telling us the story. So I think there's a moment when he's like thinking back, that was uh, act three, or that was the climax of this, or five act played or something. He makes a comment about it. And I remember I was like, I know. 
okay? Duh, it's obvious. Not in a bad way though, it's just as if you are not caught up in it or if you want to research it or if you need this extra boost, the character is like clearly pointing it out because he as a Shakespearean is aware of the irony of following these structures into their own life without knowing it, without having an author per se. So yeah, I think that was pretty cool. Fuck, I feel like it's getting super dark and I just started, I'm sorry, it's just cloudy outside. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Next point I like though is the ensemble of characters that we have. Especially during how the exposition shows us the characters, introduces us to the characters, but it really maintains them as a type. And it's very interesting and ironic because the characters are aware that they are fulfilling a certain type within the Shakespearean world of characters, per se. They know it because they have been through the place and they have been always been interpreting certain type of characters. And they are frustrated because it's their fourth year and they have only been doing a certain type of character. So they feel like they are not capable of being something else and then in this way it translates to their lives. So for example, we have a femme fatale who is very afraid that she's only pretty and not talented or that no one will see how talented she is because of her body and they only appreciate her for her body and the characters that she plays are always that type of woman. Then we also have kind of like the opposite when we have a female character that kind of is androgynous in a way that she can fit any type of gaps that there is but she's never like the protagonist. So she's very to the sidelines. Then we have our naive beauty who is naive and is not aware of what's happening. And in the overall murder story, she is also like that. Then we have this character that is kind of like put also to the side. And, but he, no one is giving him a lot of attention, but he needs attention because he has a, a drug problem. We also have like our hero, our typical hero. Think of Romeo, Hamlet, these guys that are good at heart, but they're also a product of destiny. They are not, you know, like free will is such a topic in Shakespeare and in this novel. So we have this character who is good and virtuous, but is kind of like this type of hero. And then we have his sidekick, who's Oliver, who's the one telling the story. And he is afraid that he will always be this guy's uh, psychic. And he's not like jealous of him or anything, but he's jealous of the role that he gets to play in the plays, but also in real life. To end, we have our tyrant, bully, power hungry, big guy that we have him all the time in Shakespeare and in real life. And he's pretty much like that. So this is our, these are our characters. This is the roles they play in the theater, but also in this novel. Those are all the types. Those are all found in Shakespeare and they're um, conscious of it, which is my favorite part of how it's done. They know it and they fear it in a way because they let Shakespeare influence so much of their lives already that it's come and it's almost inevitable for them to not feel this way. Again, if you're familiar with the plays and with the characters that they're interpreting, you can see who's gonna be who, who's gonna do what towards the end, which is something that happened to me, but it's not necessarily for you to be an expert in Shakespeare or whatever to get this novel. It's meh, I mean, trigger warning, if you don't like people talking in verse all the time, it might be, I don't know, difficult, or you might need an audiobook to make the distinction of that. But I think it's very beautiful to include that. And that is something that I like too, because they are so in it. They're so in the Shakespeare bubble that he, they steal the words from him and they incorporate them in their everyday life, which is amazing. Moreover, the themes of destiny, madness, lust, and I don't know, maybe friendship, if something. Uh, are very well done in this novel and I think that they're the perfect homage to Shakespeare. The themes are treated in the same way that he would have, so it's like kind of this uh, homage to him. But it's also funny because especially the theme of madness and destiny, they spin it out because the madness of the characters, it strictly comes from Shakespeare. It starts with him and it ends with him because Shakespeare is the the only thing that make them bond 
the only thing that they have in common and it's so ever present in their lives that this madness comes from it it comes from the theater is the madness of the dramatics the madness of the feelings the madness of the performer and how it really infects your life and i love it i mean <laughs> I wouldn't want to be in their situation. I like my Shakespeare just fine. I'm not infected to that point, but I mean, it makes such a good character and such a good story. Fuck! Okay, so now the thunder started, I'm really sorry. Um, let's keep going. I still only gave this book three out of five stars and I feel like I need to tell you why. And the reason is because I felt like the execution of some parts were lazy and there was no development in the characters like I was expecting to. And I know it's funny because I already said that the construction of the characters was something I liked, but I like the exposition of them. The difference between a play and a novel is that a novel you expect certain type of character development to be more progressive and kind of spelled out or to be perceived at least or to be demonstrated with actions but the actions that each character takes is very within those types that they have so i would have liked for them to kind of break more from those types some characters do but some are very underdeveloped and i'm thinking pip ren alexander even the same richard they don't have this character development that i would have enjoyed that i could maybe condone for an play because then it's very short or you just like see it happening but in the novel i felt like it was lacking and i felt that especially with richard he was the center but he was also so irrelevant we don't know the motivations for anything that he does why is he acting like that just now or why is it just becoming a problem if they have been together for four years you know how how does this dark side come out in this explosive way that it becomes also the investigations surrounding the murder were very badly done <laughs> and i think it's because we're supposed to be always with oliver and his perspective of the things and of course he has very little access to the actual investigation and all the information he gets from is like right when he is on trial or when he is um around and he kind of like casually encounters some information which is very shakespearean by the way but it felt lacking for a novel and one uh, one chapter one chapter with the detectives having like this murder board with a profile of each character would have been so great and i'm gonna tell you why it would have been great because we are in the shakespeare bubble with them we are in the castle we are in the place that they live in but these people are external the way that they see the characters is going to be very different from how oliver sees them and therefore how we see them and that could have shown the character growth because they could have been like oh this is this and this and that and we've been like no they're not like that you are like typecasting them but they, it just happens so quickly they are very bad at figuring out what happens and i would have loved one chapter one chapter from that detective perspective would have been very good help with the character construction and even make them more sympathetic i also need to say that there was a moment when i was incredibly bored and i thought i wasn't going to finish this book and i didn't want to continue but it was so close to the ending and that's not what you want from a novel the difficult part should be starting it because you are getting to know characters you don't know what's going on and that's like the first maybe 100 pages is usually when people abandon their reading because the, if you can't connect with anything there and there's nothing pulling you back you're not coming back for that book and that's totally fine but for me it happened towards the end i already knew what was happening who murdered who what was gonna happen and it was getting tiresome characters weren't growing however i don't know how that could have been avoided maybe i had too many shakespeare clues that could be it <laughs> because i feel like i figured it out because of the shakespeare clues that's why I'm saying that it's not fair that I don't make a video about it because maybe it's very biased 
in my head if it, this is like a three star or a four star or a five star maybe it's a five star to you and it blows your mind and it would have been so unfair that i'm not recommending it to you yes the point you want your climax you want your catastrophe to be the most memorable and impactful thing everyone remembers the ending of i don't know whatever you want to say titus andronicus no one remembers the beginning of like romeo and juliet is whatever but is what sets everything in motion because the tiniest things are what sets things in motion. But in this way, if we were villains, didn't deliver that impactful climax and the ending, bother me. <laughs> it could have been so much better and it could have been way cooler. I feel like if the ending would have been not open and definitive, it would have been more impactful. It would have been a four stars for me, for example. Even if you don't do anything of the detective or the character development that I mentioned before. That's how important it was. Speaking of the ending, I feel like I have an obligation to talk about it. Uh, so this is going to be my formal spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. There's going to be a spoiler. This whole thing is going to be a spoiler. So please don't close the video it's okay just jump to the next chapter and they're not gonna be any more spoilers if you are leaving the video though don't forget to subscribe bye did you do it are you still here please do not be here if you're here it's because you already read the book or you're not interested in reading it ever so you don't care or you don't care about spoilers because I'm gonna talk about the ending. The ending is that Oliver gets out of prison, he receives James' suicide letter and a special letter addressed to Oliver and it's a strack of Pericles. Pericles, the Prince of Tyre, is one of my favorite plays ever and it's very high in my Shakespeare favorite place ever. Um, so I feel like this is why I need to explain it because I've seen some commotions and read it. The whole idea is that James is supposed to have been drowned, but his body was never found. And uh, Oliver finds out with a quick Google search. This makes a parallel to Tysa, who was Pericles' wife. And I mean, he doesn't start the play with her. They meet, whatever, whatever, whatever. They get married. She's gonna have a kid. She dies at childbirth at the sea. And the seamen are like, oh, we need to get rid of her because this is bad luck and whatever. So they throw her at sea in a box, like a casket. And someone finds her because the water moves her to shore because there's like a storm, so the waters are moving all the time. And she survives, but she thinks that Pericles is dead, so she goes into the temple of Diana and becomes like a nun. Then, under this idea, Pericles goes out, raises his daughter Marina, he leaves her behind. They find each other again, and he also finds Tysa again. And there's kind of like a happy ending. Uh, the parallel here is that James is like Tysa, but she didn't fake her own death. It wasn't intentional. I think James shouldn't have faked his own death because it's out of character. Uh, it is not Shakespearean. He is his type is the hero. He didn't break from the hero type. I think not enough for him to go anti-hero or not anti-hero, but for him to go another direction. And it is frustrating to me. Pericles is a play that starts with a riddle. I'm not gonna tell you what the riddle is because I do want you to read Pericles or watch it. It's better if you watch a play actually. Pericles starts with a riddle and if we were villains ends with the riddle of Pericles. And Pericles' talk, uh, the verses that he says are kind of like filled with grief and James is filled with guilt. Guilt and grief sometimes can be interchangeable depending who died and whose fault it is or if your guilt is because of the dead or you know i don't want to give more spoilers about what happened we know that james kills richard but it was more like an accident i don't think that he breaks away from the hero's role but at the here as being the hero he shouldn't fake his own death that is um toying with destiny i don't know if that's what uh, ml rio wanted to do maybe he wanted to toy with destiny and that's how he breaks the characters away from their mold um it is not well done i feel so bad talking about that because this person is probably a shakespeare scholar and i'm just a kid if the ending wants you to think that james and oliver are gonna reunite like pericles and tysa do at the temple of diana the gods are not gonna make them reunite because james did something bad and he's a hero as a hero he should commit suicide that it sounds horrible don't commit suicide this is just a, a book a play 
a Shakespearean in, um, influence book and that's what happens uh, in Shakespeare plays but I feel that this was more fan service like a wink of oh maybe they get back together it would have been so much powerful if he were just dead and send Oliver a sorrowful beautiful letter to him addressing his love or something and to tell him to go live his life. Maybe if you wanted to end on a high note or just super sad and depressing. If you wanted to end super sad and depressive, leave the reader crying and surprised and sad instead of leaving the reader like, huh? What? Huh? He's the hero and he must follow the script. There is no way that he's alive. And if he is, it's super out of character. Shakespeare wouldn't allow it. No more spoilers now. You're free to come back. Everything's fine. But that was cool. So maybe if you go read it, come back because I talked about the ending. Um. So now I want to do a recommendation. And I touched on this a little bit before. Why you should read this book and why I think it's good. And even though I clearly had problems with it, but maybe you won't. Why? Because if this is your first step towards Shakespeare, is a really good one. Because these people are entranced with him, they are in love with it, they, they borrow his words and use them in real life and they have this connection with fiction that it's almost as if their lives were written by Shakespeare. If we were villains, it's clearly a love letter to Shakespeare. And if the author is knowledgeable about something in Shakespeare, um, they're probably a Shakespearean scholar, as I said. Hi. And you can read this novel without knowing any Shakespeare and it's gonna make you want to know, I feel. Because although it might be difficult because of the character speaking in verse, the whole time so I mean not the whole time but the majority of it so it can be challenging I mean I was a little bit also like oh, please stop and I knew what they were talking about and I knew the references or most of them but if this is your first step to where Shakespeare it's worth your time read this novel forget everything I said because reading their passion ignites something in you and it really made me remember my first step towards Shakespeare I mentioned this in another video for this channel. I don't remember which one. It, I think it was for my uh, birthday. But the first time I read something by Shakespeare, I was a little kid. Well, not that little, but I was a kid. And I didn't understand a thing, of course. But I felt this connection. I felt like this was something super important that I didn't understand, that I could understand eventually. And Shakespeare opened the door to a world of possibilities. It made me fall in love with literature. It made me study literature. And I always said I was going to be a Shakespearean. I ended up not being a Shakespearean scholar, but I am a Shakespearean at heart. And I feel like it will push you into that direction and you almost get to see the play through the book so it's like almost four stories five stories within one which is really good so please go read this book because it might open a door that you didn't know it was there for you because I don't know why we see Shakespeare as something unavailable when he wrote for the people when he's funny when he's great and that everyone should read it stop being an elitist scholar or an elitist person and stop gatekeeping Shakespeare. Shakespeare is for everyone. Okay, so before finishing this video, I do want to address the dark academia issue. And it's not an issue more than a label that sometimes we give to things and they get an unfair treatment. The way I found out about this book so late after it was published is that it was on a dark academia list of books and I wanted to read something like The Secret History because you know I love The Secret History. And this is very unfair, don't do that, because you are going to be inclined to compare If We Were Villains with any other Dark Academia book or like with Against the Secret History. And that's unfair for both books and it's going to ruin your experience as a reader. You shouldn't be comparing these things and I'm a comparative literature major. That's not the way, like the way you do comparisons are objective and establishing that they are independent ent uh, entities and blah, 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 blah. But yes, don't, don't think back to other books in this list. Just read it for fun. That's why I feel like it's sometimes hurtful to label it dark academia. But I happen to like the secret history more. But if we were villains, gives you all the dark academia vibes that you want if you wanted to read it because of this label. You have your elite group of students in a super secluded place talking in verse about Shakespeare, drinking 
and T. I almost imagined them wearing turtlenecks and whatnot. And the ideas of destiny, of madness, the, and how they lead to a murder. It's like the vibes are immaculate if that's what you're looking for. I feel like the secret history is too popular within the dark academia community that other books will never measure up against it. So they are not as recognized. And this is a perfectly fine book, but because it's not the secret history, a lot of people don't give it a chance. So there you have it. It's just different styles. You should just go in without trying to compare it to others. As I said before, the madness of the characters comes straight from Shakespeare. Everything starts with him, everything ends with him. And the power that he has of their lives is almost as if he wrote them, as if they are Shakespeare characters and he is the master of the wheel of fortune, of destiny. And this is very dark academia and this is an original idea of literature. A lot of people were afraid of the power of literature and how it had influence in people's mind so that they were easy to forget that fiction is not the same as reality or they were to think that the laws of fiction were applicable to their lives. And we see this with Oliver. He sees his life as a play. He sees it and within these terms. What I like is that it romanticizes Shakespeare and studying and whatnot but it also makes it dangerous and then that's it as again as I said again this is a theme around literature what well, seen it as dangerous almost as people saw TV as dangerous the internet as dangerous just like this new up-and-coming non-reality format that could be influencing you in a bad way overall I like this book it was fine I think that even with its flaws the good things are very good as I said and the bad things could have been proven but they are not for you to ignore it if you already read it let me know leave me a comment down below and let me know or something if you already read it let me know if not what are you waiting for add it to your tbr that is all from me my name is isabel i hope you enjoyed this video keep reading and when you're not follow me on my social media link down below if you want to help me please 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 subscribe to this channel like and share and comment and all of that so I don't feel as bad in my dark days when I feel like quitting. Oh uh, look, the sun is coming up right now when we finish recording. How marvelous. I'll see you next week. Bye. It's raining right now. Right now it's perfect reading weather, not recording weather. Very sorry about that if you hear it in the video.